Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a blueberry buckle. Now this is a very old recipe and it's absolutely delicious. You can serve it warm or cold um, just like it is. A lot of people like to add whipped cream on it though which is also really really good. But we have a lot of stuff sitting out here, so I'm going to go over the ingredients real quick. And then we're going to get on to this Pinsoon um, air oven. And we're actually going to bake our blueberry buckle in this oven today. And I'm going to tell you how you can win one of these, so don't leave until the end of the video. But for the blueberry buckle, which is what we're doing first, you want a half a cup of sugar, a half a stick of butter, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a third of a cup of flour for your topping. It has a crumb topping on it. For the, for the batter, the main part of the blueberry buckle, a cup and a half of flour, this is all purpose. Now, um, if you like your baked goods more like the stuff that you get in the store, the prepackaged stuff, you can actually use cake flour in stuff like this. It is not as healthy because it is more processed, but it will give you that taste more like the pre-baked stuff, and it's still better for you than that pre-baked stuff. It doesn't have all the additives and stuff in it. But anyway, cup and a half of flour, I'm using all purpose. I've got about a tablespoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of salt, an egg, my other half a stick of butter, three quarters of a cup of sugar, half a cup of milk, and then I have about two cups of blueberries here, maybe a little bit more. I might have as much as two and a half cups. You want at least a cup and a half of blueberries in this. And like any fruit recipe, the more fruit, the better, pretty much up to a point. I mean, you know, you got to cut it off at some point. And two and a half cups is probably the top end. It will have so many blueberries in it, it won't bake correctly. And I'm going to show you a trick with this extra tablespoon of flour here that'll make it a little bit better. So what you want to do to start with is you want to cream these ingredients here. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine um, my baking powder and my salt in my flour. Get some of this stuff out of the way. Just give that a little stir with your fork. I'm going to start with my egg because I did not pre-beat it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my mixer on and I'm going to add the sugar, the butter, and the milk. And I'm going to beat these until they are fluffy. I want to scrape all the butter off the sides of my bowl and get some of it off my beater and give it a little bit more of a mix before I add my flour because once I put my flour mixture in there I don't want to beat it real hard. this mix just in a minute I'm gonna go ahead and combine my topping ingredients um, just dump them in a bowl and I find that a good sturdy fork is the best thing to mix this with give it a little stir before you add your butter 
You do want to use um, soft butter in this recipe. If you try to use uh, cold butter straight out of the refrigerator, it's going to be impossible to mix this and the topping. Okay, that's probably good um, on our wet ingredients there. It does take just a minute to mix this topping. You can use a pastry blade for this too if you have one and you want to do that. And you, But you do not want to mix it with a mixer. Um, I've seen people try to mix this with a mixer. Um, I guess even professional cooks. If you mix it with a mixer, what happens is your butter gets creamed in with your sugar. And instead of ending up with crumbs, you end up with a solid um, lump of topping. And that's not what you want on this. You do want the crumbs. And really the only way to get that is to hand mix it. It's not that hard, but like I said, it does take just a minute. The cinnamon in this topping is optional. If you're not a cinnamon fan, you don't have to put cinnamon in it. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Like I said, you want crumbs. You don't want it so well blended that your butter is creamed. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this flour with my mixer, but I'm gonna add it real slow and I'm going to mix it kind of slow because I don't want to lose all my air. you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and I'm going to preheat this air oven too. Um, if you're using one of these it is a good idea to preheat it uh, if you're going to be baking in it. Oh. All you do is turn it on, hit the bake cycle. Um, in a regular oven this is going to take 40 to 45 minutes. I think it will probably cook faster in this but I'm not 100% sure because of the size of the pan I'm putting it in. So I'm gonna set it for like 48 minutes and you hit the power button again and that starts it. So you can use your regular oven, same thing, 350, and you're gonna cook it for about 45 minutes. Okay, I said I was gonna show you a trick with this last tablespoon of flour. You do want to wash your blueberries, um, make sure they're good and clean, and then dry them. And if you sprinkle just a tablespoon of flour on them before you add them to your batter, and kind of give it a little tap so that it coats them, what that will do is that will keep your blueberries from all sticking together in your batter. That's a tip from an old cook there. Be careful when you're folding your blueberries in because they do crush pretty easy. I mean, it's not going to ruin it if you crush a couple in there, but you don't want to crush so many that your batter gets super runny. Okay, we're going to transfer this to a 9x9 nine nine pan, and I'm just going to spray it. Um, you can use metal or glass. If you're using one of these air ovens, just a regular square cake pan would work better because they just have the rolled edges on them and you would have more room around the pan for air. But my square cake pan appears to have vanished. So this will fit. And because you can put a pan this big into this oven, that means you can actually cook stuff in it. Just 
kind of fold your batter in your pan and gently spread it out. You can see some of my blueberries are busting up a little bit just from spreading it because it is a pretty thick batter. All right, now once you get your batter in your pan, you're gonna top it with your crumb topping. Kind of spread it out even all the way to the edges. Now, if you're using your regular oven, just put this in the oven. But if you're putting it in one of these air ovens, whether you're using this one or a different one, you want to cover it with aluminum foil. And you want to make sure you get the aluminum foil on it tight. You can't just sit it in there because these have a fan in the top. They exhaust out the back. And if you just sit your aluminum foil in there, that fan will suck it up and it'll get in the fan and it will get in the element that's in here. Now, because this oven has that fan in it and it is convection, I don't want to sit my pan directly in the bottom of the oven. I want to put it on a rack so that some air can get down under it and cook the bottom of it. The same way you wouldn't really want to sit something in the bottom of your regular oven. I'm just going to put my pan or my rack in and then I'm going to put my pan in. And you can see that great big pan fits in there. When you close the door, it starts back automatically. Now, this rack that I put in here uh, did not come with this oven. It does have three racks, but they are small and they are not intended to hold a lot of weight. This pan with the blueberry buckle in it, it's just too much weight for the racks that go in here. They're intended for small foods uh, to dehydrate fruit, things like that, because this is also a dehydrator. But we're going to talk about this oven a little bit, and I'm going to explain some stuff about air ovens in general. Um, I really hope that the manufacturer likes this video because they did send us this one to try, and they also sent us another one that we're going to give away. Um, we will give that away on July the 26th. So uh, I'll tell you how to enter and everything so you can win this. This one is brand new on the market. Of course, these have been out for a while. Um, I do have an air fryer that I used. Uh, so I'm kind of familiar with how these work. But first, let me show you what comes with this one. This one has a second fan that just runs off of hot air. When you're using the dehydrator or you're cooking small things, this will actually increase the circulation in the oven and make the food cook faster. Um, it has a drip pan, which makes it easy to clean. Also, the door will lift off of this, and that makes it really easy to clean. I actually find that this is easier to clean out than the air fryer was and the inside of it doesn't seem to get as much stuff stuck to it as my air fryer did. It does have three airflow racks that come with it. Um, it has a basket that mounts on this rotisserie and I've used this. I haven't had a chance really to use this as much as I want to but I did use this to make french fries because french fries are a really easy air oven air fryer food and it only makes sense really to cook your french fries in one of these i mean it's fast it's easy it's clean and it is healthier but um you mount that on the rotisserie that goes inside the oven and this will turn so you, if you have an air fryer you don't have to pull the basket out and shake up your french fries or whatever you're cooking in it any small food you can put in here and it'll rotate it and keep it cooking. Um, it does have rotisserie forks so you can you, you can cook a whole chicken in this. You can cook a small roast in it. Um, you just put it on the uh, rotisserie rod and stick the forks in it and then mount it in the oven. And it has this to remove the 
rotisserie and stuff so you don't burn your hands trying to get this out you don't have to reach up in it I mean this is an oven it does get hot and of course it has the basket just like your air fryers do but this basket is much bigger and the air fryers um, they're kind of designed to bake in too but they're very hard to bake in because you have such a limited amount of room in them this you saw the size of that casserole dish that's about as big as you can put in there um, this casserole dish will also fit my glass loaf pans will not but a metal loaf pan will um, a six cup regular muffin pan will this little 12 cup mini muffin pan will I have no trouble with a 80 inch cake plate so you could bake a single layer cake in it uh, also a metal pie pan will fit my glass pie pans do not quite fit but because all this stuff will fit in it you can bake in it let me just peek around here and check on this real quick okay um, when you're baking in these you need to keep in mind where the heat is coming from this bakes very much like the broiler in a big oven but they add the convection to it and convection cooking is faster because it surrounds the food with moving hot air and it cooks faster because my pan is so big i'm not going to get a lot of airflow under it so this is like the supreme test of this as far as baking goes um, i have not made this recipe in this so you're going to see it when i see it and see how it comes out uh, but when you're baking in it the element is right here it's just above what you're cooking and it is a coiled heat element just like what is underneath the glass on my glass top stove it's just like the traditional coiled tops that are on electric stoves so if you're baking something like this that's going to take possibly 45 minutes start it covered if you don't cover it first it's going to burn before it gets cooked um, biscuits you can bake biscuits in here but you do want to cover them for the first 10 minutes then uncover them for the last five minutes or so and they'll be just fine but if you just put something like a biscuit or a roll or something in here to bake it it's going to burn on top before it gets done um, I've looked up a lot of stuff about these. I googled it. I do believe that these are very good appliances. I believe they have a lot of uses, but you have to use them correctly. You're not going to stick a cake in there and pull it out instantly. It's not a magic oven. It, it is a small oven. If you've ever cooked in a toaster oven, you know that that element is very close to the food on the top and the bottom. And I know a lot of people who don't have room for ovens buy countertop or toaster ovens and it's hard to cook in those without burning the top too. You have to cover it. Same thing with this. If you know how to use them, these can be great. And this is far better than a toaster oven. Um, the way that I brown the buns in the uh, cheesesteak sandwich, you can brown your buns in this. Um, just like you do a toaster oven. Pretty much anything you can do in the toaster oven, you can do in this. If you were just making toast though, you would have to flip it over because it only has the element in the top, not in the bottom. And this is not really for toasting, you know, for making toast. But it will do everything the toaster oven will do. And if you're just reheating leftovers, it reheats them much quicker than the toaster oven. Um, they suggest in a lot of the infomercials that you replace your microwave with this. Well, I use my toaster oven a lot of times instead of my microwave. I'm not crazy about what a microwave does to my food. It just kind of makes everything rubbery. Now, I do use the microwave usually just to heat water or melt butter or something like that. But I use it some. I mean, I wouldn't give up my microwave. I like to have it. But if you're reheating food, this is far better than a microwave and it's better than a toaster oven because it's faster and it holds more um, if you're reheating stuff you can certainly use these racks and you can layer food in there and reheat several things at once baked sandwiches i have baked some sandwiches in this they are wonderful they it's fast 
you can brown and then close it up and wrap it in foil and heat it up really, really warm. Delicious baked sandwiches in this. Um, I also did some flatbread pizzas in them. And a flatbread pizza is far healthier than one of those frozen ones that you stick in the oven. And it's fast in this. You can put your own toppings on it, add whatever you want to it. They come out really good, all nice and toasty and bubbly on top. I said, so these have definite uses. They are superior to other appliances, but you have to understand how to use them. Um, and they, another thing the info commercials say is absolutely oilless, no oil needed. Well, you're not going to get bubbly, fried, crispy flavor without some fat. Now for my french fries, and I've been making french fries in the air oven, or the air fryer for a while, all I do is drizzle a little oil on them and give them a toss before I put them in there. And I mean just a little, like for two servings for me and Brett, well me and Brett probably actually closer to four servings by the Food and Drug Administration standards. But, you know, two regular sized potatoes, which is what I'll make a, for us if I'm making french fries. A, only about a teaspoon of oil, and you just toss it and coat it, throw it in there, and that will give you crispy fried french fries with very little oil. So it's certainly oil less, but it's not oil less. You need a little bit of oil. Um, they'll do fried chicken in these and pull it out, and it looks like uh, it came from KFC. Well, if you're doing chicken with chicken skin, the chicken skin will have plenty of fat in it and it will fry it. But if you're doing chicken tenders or uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast, whatever you batter that in, you need to add just a tiny bit of oil. Like I said, you don't need to go crazy. The same thing with fish. If you want fried fish and you're battering it, add just a little bit of oil in whatever you're battering it to or what I do sometimes is I will take a, a small spray bottle and I'll spray my food so that it's crispy on the outside and I still have that fried flavor and certainly if you're misting something with oil you're going to have far less fat in it than if you deep fry it and dip it down in the oil. So understand what you're buying. If you want that really fried taste, add a little bit of oil. Now, like I said, if you're cooking some kind of meat that has a lot of fat in it, like chicken with a skin on it, or um, some kind of pork maybe that has a layer of fat on it, you don't need to add anything. That's going to have enough fat in it. But when you consider all the stuff this thing will cook, it is certainly worth the money. And they are giving us a 15% discount code that you can use with the Amazon coupon. This is available on Amazon and I'm going to give you the link to that. So you can get this one cheaper than the standard one that Walmart sells. And it does have a few more accessories with it and it is certainly bigger. And if you're going to use this for an oven and a fryer and a dehydrator, which I didn't even get to yet, I have dehydrated some bananas in this and uh, I did some strawberries in it. They came out really, really good. And we may do a dehydrator video and use this in the dehydrator video because dehydrating food is a great way to preserve it and put it back a little. It takes up less room than canning. Uh, it won't fill your freezer up. And dehydrated fruits are delicious. They're better than candy. So we may do some dehydrator or a dehydrator video and use this in it too. Um, I've got all these appliances sitting back here. Now I use my toaster oven on a regular basis. I will be replacing it with this. Uh, the air fryer, I've used it on a regular basis. I will be replacing it with this. The deep fryer, I haven't really used since the kids grew up because I've been trying to keep bread alive and cooking a little healthier. <laughs> if you choose a healthy oil to fry in, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but healthy is expensive. To, so to fill up a deep fryer with um, like grapeseed oil or something, it would cost a few bucks. So I haven't really used it since we changed the way that we eat. I just fry stuff in a pan or in a small um, saucepan 
skillet, whatever. I don't use a deep fryer, and I haven't really since the kids left home. But this would certainly replace the deep fryer. And my dehydrator, you can tell I've used that. I have been using that since my kids were very little. Um, I'll dehydrate meat for high protein snacks, dehydrate fruit for fruit snacks. And like I said, I really, really like dehydrated food and this will replace that. Now I don't have a giant kitchen, so getting rid of all that stuff and just having this, that in itself makes it worth the money. And like I said, these aren't very expensive by the time you add the discount code and the coupons. And I know a lot of you are avid Amazon shoppers and you can find even more discounts to go with it. I had uh, one viewer tell me that he got the set of Contempo utensils for $3 with all the discounts he found. So look for the extra discounts because you can use the discount code they gave us with those. Um, and definitely get the discount code out of the description so you can use it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really need to tell you about this. Other than cover what you're baking for most of the time, like I'm going to uncover this maybe the last 15 minutes because I do want the top brown, but until it gets close to done, I want to keep it covered because I don't want it burned. I wish that I knew how much electricity this thing pulled, but I could not find that in the user's manual or the recipe book or on the box. So maybe they'll send us that information, but if you like fresh baked stuff but you don't want to turn on your oven and heat up your whole house in the summertime this does exhaust hot air but not nearly as much as what turning the oven on 350 for 45 minutes would do it only has that one little element in it so this is an option so that you can have fresh baked stuff in the summertime and still keep your house cooler now I know there are a lot of people who live in spaces where they don't have room for an oven and I certainly think this is the best option for those people or um, you know people living in tiny houses, RVs that don't have ovens, efficiency apartments, dorm rooms or maybe just something happened to your oven and you can't really afford to replace it because let's face it ranges and ovens are very very expensive. This is an option and you don't need 220 for it. So if you're in one of those places where you don't have 220, you can get one of these and you can bake in it. For Brett and I, I like using a small oven when I can rather than heating up the house with a big one. Um, it does save energy and it also keeps from making the house hot and we can still have hot stuff. I really like the idea that this big casserole dish will sit in here because in the summertime when vegetables are fresh, roasted vegetables are wonderful and you could make them in here easily. They would brown nicely and you could get a whole pan full in there, enough to feed four, maybe even five people, which is good. And you can't do that with other small appliances. Certainly you could feed two people. So anyway, I'm going to tell you how to win this while we're waiting on this to cook. Um, as always, you can comment anything you want in this video, and you certainly don't need an air oven to try this blueberry buckle, but if you want to win the air oven, start your comment with PINSOON, P-I-N-S-O-O-N, and that way I'll know you want to win the air oven, and then I'll select the winner on July the 26th, and I will post it. Um, We've already got a contest going on where we're giving stuff away. If you win these and you don't want to post your address publicly on YouTube, we are also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page and you can send a private message on Facebook with your address. I will put the winner in the description uh, of the video, you know, right under the name. You can click on the description and it'll have the description of the video and it'll have the link to this, the discount code for this. And once we select a winner, I'll put the winner in there. Um, I will also pin a comment at the top of the comments with the winner in it. And I will reply to your comment and tell you that you won. But like I said, if you don't want to post your address publicly on YouTube, you can go to Facebook and send me a message. 
Now you can enter up to 10 times. So you can leave up to 10 comments at second tempo and all those comments will be entered. So now you know what you need to do to enter to win it. You know where to get it. Um, the link will be there. They are on Amazon. Look for all those discounts and use our discount code too. Um, and leave those comments and enter. This is starting to pull my paper up and it's also starting to cook. Um, I can see up in there that it's starting to bubble up around the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and take my foil off and finish cooking it. This also has a light in it in a door which makes it much nicer than the air fryers. Um, you can see what you're cooking and I'm going to keep an eye on it. It says I got 22 minutes left. Um, it may take the same amount of time because like I said I'm not getting airflow much airflow down under it because my pan is almost all the way to the edges of the oven but I'm going to keep an eye on it now I don't want it to burn if it starts to get too brown before it gets done I'm just going to put my foil back over it okay I just checked on this and it probably has about five minutes to go which is about what we've got left on the timer I kind of suspected that it would not cook faster in this because of the size of my pan. Now if I just had that 9x9 nine nine metal pan with the rolled edges so there would have been a little bit more room around the edges for the air to flow under it, I think it would have cooked at least 10 minutes faster than in the regular oven. But because I'm using that big glass pan and I'm totally filling it up, it's taking the same amount of time because it doesn't have that air flow around it. Okay, I think we're done now. Um, let's check it and see what we've got. It's risen up nicely and it's brown. You can see my blueberries popping and my toothpick is clean so my center's done. And like I said, this looks just like it does when I make it in the oven. Now, you do have to turn this off. Uh, it took, like I said, about the same time as it did in the oven, but it's absolutely perfect. And if you don't have an oven, you don't have room for an oven or something, this is a great option because you can't get this really with any other portable oven that I've ever tried. So if you're looking for a portable oven, really good option. If you're looking for an air fryer, I would choose an air oven over an air fryer because of all the additional things it does. It, it's the same thing if you're considering a toaster oven, I would go with this rather than the toaster oven. Uh, it just does so much more. But I hope you give this blueberry buckle recipe a try for sure. This is absolutely delicious. Um, it's a very old recipe. It's great just like this, warm or cold, good for breakfast or dessert. Um, you could add a little whipped cream to it if you're serving it for breakfast and you want a little something special. Um, if you're serving it for dessert, it's good with a big scoop of vanilla ice cream. But we really appreciate you joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. I forgot to mention, you do need to be a subscriber to win this. So if you're not a subscriber already, click that subscribe button. And you definitely want to turn on the notifications so you know if you've won. Uh, please give us a like and share this to help us grow. And so your friends know about the giveaway. Until next time, remember to put God first.